This is K2 News at 11 on your side. Most people see between one and three critical incident in a lifetime, right? Officers will see three to five in a day. Every year, more than 180 officers die by suicide across the United States, according to a study. Tonight, K2 is digging into the issue and how it's impacting law enforcement agencies in Oregon and Washington. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday. For K2 News at 11, I'm Barry Mangold. The retirement of a local police chief is putting the spotlight on officers' mental health in our region, and K2 is asking what is being done to address the issue. K2's Victor Park joins us live in studio with a closer look at this issue. Victor? That's right, Barry. In fact, uh, this data, the screen uh, over here on the screen says it all. First Help is an organization that tracks law enforcement and first responders' suicides. Since 2016, six officers either retired or on active duty died by suicide in Oregon. When you look at Washington, it is double that, 12 officers, which brings us to Vancouver. At the Vancouver Police East Precinct, police cars lined up waiting for the next call. But the agency has had to answer some of the toughest calls of its own in the last two years. Two officers died by suicide. Nationwide, we've seen what a police work can do to somebody over a 30-year career. A recent report shows, on average, 184 law enforcement officers die by suicide each year. The likelihood of suicide, heart disease, and early death is extremely high among law enforcement, says BPD Assistant Chief Erica Nielsen. So not just the calls that you go on, but shift work, not seeing your family, changing days off, court on your days off. Like the job itself is sometimes stressful just to work into. Nielsen is in charge of the agency's mental health program. So a few of those different things are we have a part-time mental health practitioner that is in-house, Drew, um, and so he goes on ride-alongs, he goes to briefings, he does um, just time in-house for people to be able to talk to him, ask about resources, find out things that they can do if they're struggling with calls. What do you think could be done differently moving forward? I don't think it's differently, I think it's more, right? So one of the things that um, has been implemented since I came a year, a little over a year ago, we have on-duty workout time now. So people have the ability to go in the gym and do workouts, or during that wellness time, they can talk to Drew and have a mental health uh, counseling session. She spent 31 years at the Portland Police Bureau, and that is where she started a mental health and resiliency program that became personal to her. So I looked at the toll that my father took for 31 years uh, in the P Portland Police Bureau uh, and the, the struggles that he and his friends and the people that I grew up with had. Now, she hopes her officers can look back at a career that may no longer be handcuffed by struggles. We don't have to leave this career broken. Well, Vancouver Police plans to have a comfort dog, and there is also a grant to do heart health testing. Meanwhile, the deaths of officers are still high every year, but the highest wasn't after 2020. In fact, it was in tw uh, 2019 with 255, and when you add all this up, it adds up to more than 1,300 first responders that have died by suicide since 2018. I'll send it back to you, Barry. Thank you very much.